Hey everyone, welcome to Better Reading. What are you reading? Uh, my name is Kelly Doust. I am a publisher of commercial fiction and non-fiction at Affirm Press. Um, you will have heard of us because we are the publishers of Pip Williams' Amazing, The Bookbinder of Jericho and The Dictionary of Lost Words. Um, I'm here today just to tell you a little bit about what I've been reading lately and um, you can ask me some questions about publishing if you'd like. I've been in publishing for over two decades now. I started off as a book publicist um, and publicity manager for many years. Then I left to write books of my own. I've published, um, I've written and had published eight books of my own, both fiction and nonfiction. Mm -hmm. And as I said, I largely focus on commercial titles for um, mainly for women readers at Affirm Press. And so I have a lot of those to share with you today. Um, so this I haven't actually read this one, but this is the better reading book of the week. So this is next on my list, The Bone Hacker. Um, Kathy Wright's amazing author who's written many, many books before. Um, it's, it's a crime thriller, um, and I know many of you will already be big fans of Kathy. Um, I just finished reading last week's book of the, re the week, um, Lioness. This was incredible. Um, not only is it about class and a very privileged woman um, losing uh, the, all the things that she holds very dear, but um, there was another very important theme to this and it was about um, middle-aged women um, sort of uh, reaching a point in their life where they kind of stop trying to please other people and start to figure out what might please themselves. So I just could not put that down. I thought it was the most amazing novel and I haven't read any Emily Perkins before, but I'll certainly be looking at her previous books. Um, uh, do make comments if you'd like to say what you're reading. Oh, Natalia Clark, you have said you're reading The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Um, I have to an amazing book and um, I love Taylor Jenkins' read that is such a fantastic book. Um, Karen Lee says, hello from Auckland. Hi, Karen. Um, Carolyn Manners says that she's uh, just read We Are Not Like Them by Jo Piazza and Christine Pride for her book club. And she said, it's very good and um, lots to think about uh, in that novel. Also Broken Bay by Margaret Hickey. Um, another book that I finished recently, which I'm sure a lot of you will be reading as well because it is number two in the bestsellers this week, is um, Yellow Face by um, Rebecca F. Quang. Um, this, for me, was such an exciting book to delve into because it is about publishing. It's almost too close to the bone. Sometimes when I was reading it, I... Um, I, it just felt really icky for me because um, it's like a particularly stressful day at work, but I really loved it. It's um, it's uh, all about cultural appropriation and um, intrigue in the publishing industry, of which there's always some, and uh, it, it was just very incisive, clearly written by somebody who understands writing and publishing very well. Um, Barbara Hodges says, oh, she's reading... Big Swiss by Jen Began. Barbara, I read Big Swiss. It was bonkers. I absolutely loved it. It's very quirky. Um, I sort of stumbled onto it and I it, it's it's unlike anything I've ever read before, but it is um it's about a woman who's a little bit adrift and she's middle-aged, um, probably in her mid-40s, and she moves to this um super hipster town in the Hudson Valley. Um, I think in upstate New York, and uh, she is a um, transcriber for a psychologist. And because it's a small town, she starts to run into all the people that uh, she's been transcribing. So she knows all their intimate secrets, including um, the secrets of this woman uh, she has dubbed Big Swiss, who she actually meets at the dog park one day, and they have this weird connection and uh, I won't tell you anymore, but it is unusual and very good. Um, I'll just go up, there's lots more comments from you. Gail Lansdowne says um, that she's reading Cloisters by Katie Hayes. I have not read that. And 
Paula Lane says she's reading The Beautiful Words by Vanessa McCausland. Um, yeah, I haven't read any Vanessa McCausland, but I really would like to. I have got another one of her books on my shelves. Um, Kerry Colton says, hi, I'm reading Carla by Colin Walsh, and she's loving it. Judy says, um, Wild Place by Christian Wyatt. That's um, an Affirm Press title. Yeah, he is an amazing writer. I enjoyed Wild Place too. Um, Sally Smith says she's reading um, The Things That Matter Most by Gabby Stroud. And Jess Gill says she's reading The Librarian by Sally Vickers. Um, I haven't read either of those, um, but I have read recently The Librarianist by Patrick DeWitt. Patrick DeWitt wrote The Sisters, Brothers and French Exit, both of which were made into films. I'm a big fan of his writing. He's, um, he's an unusual writer. His books are very pleasant and easy to read, but quite profound. The Librarianist is about um, uh, an elderly man who has been a librarian all his life, is in his 70s, and one day he finds a woman sort of roaming the streets who's clearly got um, advanced dementia and he takes her back to the home where she's staying and um, it sort of sparks uh, an opportunity for him to reflect upon his life and become involved with um, some people when he hasn't really been involved with people in his life. He has a fairly uh, secluded existence and, you know, it, it in another writer's hands it could be uh, trite but, Patrick DeWitt is just such a wonderful writer. I, I could not put it down. Um, got some more comments here from people. Faye Gibbons is about to read Wifedom. Yes, I've got a copy of that too. Um, big fan of Anna Funda. Kerry Gosling says she just finished The Red Tent, an oldie but a goodie. Um, Julia Scarry says she's reading The House of Now and Then by Joe Dixon. And Kerry says she's reading... Um, Oh, sorry, The Red Tent by Anita Diamond. Yes. Um, Rhonda Poole is waiting for the new Karen Rose book, which is due out this month. And Teresa Seeley says she just finished Elephant. Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine, um, which I agree is an absolutely beautiful book. Um, I just wanted to take the opportunity to talk to you about some of the books that I've been working on this year because I obviously only get a limited opportunity to read books that I'm not working on. Um, I do still read a lot of books that I'm not working on um, uh, for pleasure. I just sort of read at different times of the day. If I'm if I'm reading books for work, I tend not to read them in the evenings before I go to bed because I'll, I'll lay awake all night thinking about what work I need to do on them. So um, I thought I'd share with you Rachel Coops's Paris for Beginners. Um, if any of you have read Almost French, um, this book is a not dissimilar fish out of water uh, memoir about Rachel, who is a play school TV presenter and um, uh, a longtime yoga instructor. She uh, is an actor as well. She's been on McLeod's Daughters and various other um, Australian TV shows. And when she was in her late 20s, she moved to Paris um, to pursue um, an opportunity that she got to learn um, under Sasha Baron Cohen's instructor at um, a clown school there. It's, it's a really wonderful story about um, Finding Yourself, it's a sort of coming of age book, even though she is in her late 20s, it's sort of her coming to grips with who she is. She leaves behind a very um, uh, happy long-term relationship to pursue this opportunity and in doing so um, leaves that partner behind. And, and you know, Rachel's now in her mid-40s and um, the book is really about reflecting upon uh, what she gave up and um, whether she would do the same thing again. It's it's really nostalgic, beautiful, but also very funny, very entertaining and um, a real page turner. Um, another book I've been working on this year, you will all be really familiar with the beautiful Belinda Alexandra, um, an amazing historical fiction writer. Belinda and I have worked together before on two nonfiction titles. She wrote um, a book called The Divine Feline about her um, love of cats that I worked on years ago and Emboldened is um, her story of essentially surviving uh, um, a very uh, unhappy relationship and moving on from that and taking strength from um, 
both her own mother and the women in history that she bases her best-selling historical fiction on. Um, it's just a, the subtitle is on finding the fire to keep going when all seems lost. And it really is such a sort of beautiful, supportive book if you have been going through tough times or even if you haven't and, you know, you want to read about somebody else who's um, who's learning how to kind of remake their life again when they have to change everything. Um, another beautiful book from earlier in the year that I worked on, um, debut author Kate Sully, Tuesday Evenings with the Co Coped and Craft Resistance. Um, I don't know a single soul who could not love this book um, and who could fault it. It's um, just really got such a lot of heart. Uh, Kate Solly um, writes about, she's a crafter herself. Um, I am too, so I love the whole kind of craft community. And she talks about... Um, a woman who, not unlike Eleanor Oliphant, is a bit unusual. She has, um, she's on the spectrum and she sets up a crafting group for uh, crochet, women who want to crochet. No knitters, please. And um, she only expects that women will join and is, is rather perturbed when a young man who becomes a love interest um, joins and uh Together, that group bands together to um, do something really meaningful, which is to fight Islamophobia in their small town um, when there are uh, these sort of fascists who are um, trying to run the new Muslim refugees in the community out of the town. And so they um, they put their crafting skills to use and start yarn bombing the town. Um, it's such a beautiful book. Um, Pardon my French, uh, this is, I don't know if any of you have read this yet, but it's been doing quite well. Um, beautiful Rachel Morgan McIntosh, she, this is her first book, um, but she's a writer. A lot of you will have read her before in the Sydney Morning Herald of the Age. Um, she took her family to Sommier in the south of France for a year, and it's just, again, fish out of water, um, stories who doesn't love France, um, about her and her family, um, trying to navigate um, French schools. She's got three small children and her husband was working remotely from there. They did this in 2019, so um, before the world changed and they had the most amazing year away. It's very, very funny and we'll be publishing um, Rachel's most amazing new book next year called Mothering Heights. Um, another beautiful book, Mr. Smith to You. Um, this is based on the true story of Bill Smith, who um, was uh, a jockey um, who uh, was discovered after his death that he um, had been born female. So um, probably Australia's first trans jockey. There have been trans jockeys since. And despite it having um, some really, you know, very serious themes and obviously a lot of trauma um, with Bill's experience, it's it's actually like a very light, uplifting read and so beautifully written by debut novelist Kerry Taylor. Um, uh, oh, one other book that I'd like to talk about that's not one I've been working on recently is um, 12 Steps to a Long and Fulfilling Death. Um, this is actually out today. Um, it's written by Sarah Smith. She's a screenwriter. She um, uh, produced and screenwrote um, ama uh, Amazing Grace, Alias Grace, sorry, on ABC TV. Um, this is a wonderful ghost story about a woman who has been murdered and she finds herself in um, a sort of uh, limbo place between... Um, where she was murdered and um, and where she's going. Uh, and her job is to uncover the truth of uh, who and why um, she was murdered. And it is, it's really wonderful, very wry. Um, Sarah's an incredible writer and um, I'm excited to see what else she does next. Um, oh, I've only got an advanced reading copy here, but it is actually out now. Carrie Cox's Storylines. I don't know if any of you read... Um, so Many Beats of the Heart, beautiful novel that we brought out last year. Storylines is um, about a young woman who has had a terrible accident and a facial disfigurement and it's really about she runs a, um, a wellness retreat and it's about her kind of coming to grips with uh, the way that she presents herself in the world and, um, and uh, I guess, opening herself to, up to the possibility of love when she thinks of herself as being 
really quite um, damaged. Um, it's a really beautiful novel and Carrie Cox is a wonderful writer from Perth. Um, I'm just looking at some more of your comments. Um, what have we got here? Restless Dolly Maunder by Kate Grenfell. Um, yes, Rita's reading that at the moment. And the next on her list is Sophie Green's Weekends with the Sunshine Gardening Society. Yes, Sophie Green, wonderful writer, and Kate Grenfell as well, obviously. Um, oh, Natalia Clark has said, what advice do you have for someone who wants to get into the publishing industry? Um, Natalia, a lot of people, when they want to get into publishing, um, think that they'll probably go into editorial. It seems to be the most common thing people think of as working on people's books in that way. Um, but I would suggest that if you are interested in publishing, there are tons of entry level jobs available and in all sorts of different departments. Um, I thought I wanted to be an editor, but my first role in publishing was actually in a marketing department. And then I moved into publicity and um, uh, it, it can just be a wonderful way to learn about the different parts of the business. Um, another really uh, tried and trusted tested route into publishing is being a, a retailer, a bookseller. Um, it's very valuable to have the knowledge that booksellers have because um, they're at the front line really and understand what people are looking for. Um, so don't be too fixed on the idea of where exactly you want to be in publishing. Um, and there, there's a, a publication called, called Australian Bookselling and Publishing or Australian Bookseller and Publisher that advertises roles that are available in the publishing industry because not all of them are um, advertised on Seek. So hopefully that's helpful. Uh, Jill Wright says she's just about to start One Day We're All Going to Die. I have not heard of that book, but it sounds intriguing. Um, Jesse Joseph is reading Liars by Petronella McGovern. She's an amazing writer. Um, and Gail Lansdowne says Divine Felines is one of her favourite books, um, which is Belinda Alexandra's beautiful nonfiction book about cats. Um, Jane Miles also says she loved Tuesday evenings with the Copeton Craft Resistance. I'm thrilled. Um, and so did Jesse Joseph and Rita Basso. They've all read it. Wonderful. Um, Another book that actually is just released in the last week or, or two is Teacher Teacher that I've been working on. It's a wonderful anthology of um, both teachers and students and it's about inspiring educators. Um, anyone who is a teacher or who has a teacher in their life, I urge you to read this or pass it on to that person because it really does celebrate the work of teachers, especially with everything that they've been dealing with um, through the pandemic and, and how hard it's made their work and just, you know, changes within um, education. I, you know, it's a real mix of um, stories from uh, young students up to um, high school students and even ter tertiary educators and educated students. Um, but it's really just about these incredible teachers who have helped propel people along the way or not. Um, it's very honest and um, just talks about the impact that a good teacher can have on someone's life. Um, Melvina Yock has said she just finished 12 Steps to a Long and Fulfilling Death as well and she found it very fun. I agree. It's, um, it's an unusual book and a murder mystery. Yes, it is. Um, okay. Kaz Lee says she's reading Broken Bay by Margaret Hickey, which I have not read. And Kay Backman says she's reading The Silent Patient and enjoying it. Um, I thought I'd just tell you as well, I've only got a little bit more time left, but I thought I'd tell you about two books that are coming up, which um, I wanted to flag that I'm extremely excited about and I've been working on this year. Um, a lot of you will already be fans of Melissa Ashley. Um, she is um, the wonderful author of um, The Birdman's Wife and The Bee and the Orange Tree and her new book, The Naturalist of Amsterdam, is set in Amsterdam and Suriname um, uh, several centuries ago. It's about um, an artist who uh, created this incredible uh, work of art with um, naturalist uh, illustrations called The Metamorphosis. And it's really about her daughter and the, and the legacy that, that she leaves. Um, so that's coming out in no 
November, October. We're very excited about that. Um, also, Hannah Ferguson's Bite Bag. I don't know if many of you are followers of Cheek Media Co., but Hannah is an incredible young woman. She's 25, uh, a lawyer, and she um, makes what I think are probably the most incisive comments upon um, the media, things that nobody else is saying. Um, this book is really, so the subtitle of the book is Feminism, Feminism, Media, Politics and Our Power to Change It All. And that's what it's about it, with chapters on everything from um, media and politics through to friendship. And it's, um, yeah, it's incredibly powerful and she is definitely one to watch. Oh, and I thought I'd just say before I go that I also listen to audiobooks but tend to only listen to memoir. And the two that I have listened to most recently are, of course, um, Prince Harry's Spare and Matthew McConaughey's, um, uh, oh, I can't remember what it's called. You know it. Friends, Lovers and The Big Terrible Thing, they were both fascinating. I just, I, I love listening to people in audio when they're talking about their lives because um, I can experience lives that are very different from my own. And I've run out of time. So I just want to say thank you so much for all of your comments and um, for being such wonderful readers and for supporting us in this industry because it's really important that you're here and that you love books as much as we do.